Welcome back to Americanish. My name is Adela Kochav. And I'm Mary Mwaba, and we are the Daughters of Diaspora. So, Mariam, let's dive right into this. There's been a lot of news coming out of Ukraine. And what I've been seeing all over while I'm talking to friends is, well, what about all the other wars that haven't gotten this kind of attention? Why suddenly is Ukraine the center of the focus? Why aren't we talking about what's happening everywhere else around the world? And I understand that there's a word for this called whataboutism. So what is whataboutism? Okay, so um, what aboutism is exactly how it sounds. It's when somebody brings up a concern, an issue, uh, a topic, and one's response is, what about, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the term was actually coined in 2008 in an Economist article um, by this guy who used to um, interact with the Soviet Union, um, Soviet ambassadors, Soviet officials. And he coined that term after any time he'd have an official meeting with Soviet leadership and they'd bring up concerns about censorship, about any of the horrible things that the Soviet Union was doing, the Soviet leadership would turn around and say, well, what about this? What about slavery? What about et cetera? And insert bad thing here. And it's, it's a logical fallacy um, because it dismisses the point of focus and aims to point out the hypocrisy in a person. Um, so that's what about is in a nutshell. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's deflecting. It's, you know, if we talk about relationships, it's a way of making you think that your issue isn't even important enough because there's so much other baggage. But it's like we're talking about this now. And I've seen what about take a lot of different roots. Now I see it in two ways. Number one, there is you know, the basic whataboutism where it's I want to talk about a certain issue and you're bringing up a completely unrelated issue. Um, and it manifests in either riding the coattails and hijacking a cause or in squashing down a cause to talk about something else. And this is something I'm seeing specifically with what's happening in Ukraine. You're seeing it on both sides. On one side, you're seeing people say, oh, look at Ukrainian suffering. Look at this Ukrainian war. And then they say, and also look at and bring in a completely different conflict. I don't know if you've seen Gigi Hadid's post a couple of weeks ago when he, you know, she was talking about how she was going to donate her proceeds from Vogue to help the Ukrainian people, which, of course, is super topical. And it's what we're doing in the moment. And then she inserted and the Palestinian people. And it's not the first time that I've seen this done, especially with those causes, where suddenly we're focusing on one cause. You saw this with BLM, where suddenly there's Palestinian flags being flown or, you know, we're all guilty of trying to relate to a cause. But there's a difference between relating to a cause and using a cause to further your own. Yeah. And and it's it's wrong for a couple of different reasons. And the reason it, that sticks with me is because uh, you create misinformation. You think when if somebody sees it, they think oh, I understand this issue, therefore I understand mm -hmm. issue number two, issue number three. And they, they create these relations in their head, they create these um, similarities that sometimes aren't true. And that's where a lot of misinformation happens. Um, you said something about coattailing. Yeah. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, 100%. Uh, 100%. And I think you're you're a hundred percent right when it comes to false parallels because it simplifies conflicts to things that they aren't. But yeah, coattails is exactly what I was saying before, where you ride a cause, you see a cause has momentum and you say, I can ride this cause to further my own. And then on the other side, cause smashing, right? So that's a more um, classic whataboutism, where if we're talking about an important political issue, suddenly you'll say, well, what about something else and squash it down? So, for example, I've seen this done in Israel. Israel has LGBTQ rights. And suddenly someone will say, well, why don't we talk about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? And it's like, well, these are two completely different issues. They're completely different. We could talk about advancement for LGBTQ people and then talk about the conflict separately. Don't squash a good thing because you want to talk about something else. Right. And you see this again with everything. And I think it's, again, human nature to want to relate everything back to yourself. I right. think as human people, we are egotistical, but not everything's about us. If there's something that actually happens that connects a cause, you could talk about the connection and the cause. But using the coattails to further your own, I think it's almost like disingenuous and in and of itself, it's hypocritical. 
Yeah. So it seems like whataboutism essentially is deflection and pointing out hypocrisy instead of understanding one's argument. Um, have you seen any instances with uh, whataboutism providing any valid points? Yeah. So I'd say one that I've seen is Ukrainian refugees, right? You're hearing about Ukrainian refugees being taken in by other countries and having to flee war. And, you know, we've had a lot of other refugee crises within the last not even 10 years. You had the African refugee crisis with African migrants. We had the Syrian refugee crisis. And the world wasn't as willing or open to taking them in. And I think that that should bring up a bigger conversation of, well, why are some kinds of refugees okay while others aren't? Why does one deserve sim sympathy while the other doesn't? And I think that kind of whataboutism is to open another conversation. So I think that whataboutism, when it's used as an argument, is wrong because it is deflection. But using whataboutism to open up other conversations, I think, is valid. And that's how I would teeter that line. Okay, Adela. So... We talked about how whataboutism could be dilutive or dismissive of certain issues. Um, some could argue that whataboutism uh, is intersectional. It brings up uh, issues that cross each other. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so intersectionality, of course, is finding commonality between different groups of people, different causes, finding the points where they intersect, and fighting to make that better, right? So the issue with whataboutism is that it completely creates the false parallels, which is a false intersectionality. It's using one cause for the other. What we're doing here is we're talking about our differences. We're talking about our similarities. We're seeing what makes us alike. And together, we're riding that forward. It's very different from using each other to further one's cause. And that's the difference, I'd say, between true intersectionality and a true intersectional relationship mm -hmm. and cause hijacking. You know, when you want to be an ally, you want to be supportive. And that's about, it's your time to shine. Let me help you shine. And that's allyship. What aboutism and writing coattails of white aboutism, hijacking a cause is saying, yes, you have a horrible issue. Now let me tell you about mine. And I think that that's um, performative and it's also disingenuous. Right. So are you trying to say um, that... A positive way to engage with whataboutism or to use whataboutism is one that builds off of. So it's yes and as opposed to no but. Yes, it's, it's not only a yes and, it's a yes and that's consensual. You can't yes and someone when they don't want to be yes anded because that's kind of forcing a relationship to be formed where no relationship existed. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to aboutism. Uh, thank you for joining us. We'll see you soon.